Greetings colleagues, this is Dr. Izad here with a video outlining yet another project idea, and this project incorporates web design. And if you like this content and would like updates on my videos outlining project ideas and learning activities that promote higher order thinking skills, do like, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. First and foremost, I would like to establish the purpose of projects and this particular project's options pertinence to the rigor and relevance framework. Specifically, we will be focusing on Quadrant D and Level 5 of the application model, which, when considered in tandem, posit that students should be able to apply content-related skills to real-world contexts. And real-world contexts could be interpreted to mean career-related contexts. The language used in Quadrant D also indicates that students should be able to apply knowledge to solve unknown problems, which is so general that it can mean anything. In any case, the problem presented in language arts class, with respect to almost all language arts related tasks, involves communicating complex ideas in a sophisticated and clear manner. There are many different ways to communicate ideas, and website design affords students a larger variety of tools to leverage to clearly articulate their own complex ideas. The communicating of complex ideas by addressing a prompt would cover interdisciplinary applications, to which Quadrant B refers, as the knowledge taxonomy verbs associated with Quadrant B don't have to do with synthesis, but contextualizing the task using website design satisfies Quadrant D as students would be applying the content-related skills to the creation of a product, the product here being the website, the likes of which would be useful to create in a variety of professional fields, which necessitates synthesis across various disciplines, allowing for intradisciplinary connections. Here are some professional fields that my own students expressed interest in, in which designing a website would be a useful skill. We have entrepreneurship. Obviously, you would have to market yourself or your brand, which one could do through a website. The same goes for business, if students wanted to enter the culinary or beauty industry. And some expressed interest in careers in computer science and software engineering, and the skills involved in designing a website would certainly be utilized in those professional fields, especially if you are building a website from scratch using a coding language like HTML. But we're not that advanced yet, and the students may not be either. So I will be demonstrating how to build a website in response to a language arts prompt through Google Sites. I've already explained how to access Google Sites and how to use some of the features in a previous video, so you can reference that to see how to build the site. We may revisit some of those features briefly, but this video will be dedicated more to the rationale of creating a website for a project-based learning activity with respect to the elements of the rigor and relevance framework that were just discussed. So, let's look at this exemplar website that I had created in response to this project prompt, which pertains to the grades 11 and 12's sixth standard for reading literature. Essentially, it is prompting students to determine how the authors of the Crucible and an optional text viewed or would have viewed McCarthyism. And here is a look at an exemplar website that I had created in response to this prompt. Let us see how I apply content-related skills within the content of the discipline, referring to Quadrant B, and how I am simultaneously building skills that can be applied to real-world contexts, referring to Quadrant D. Here is the prompt really quickly, so you have a point of reference. So, this prompt to which students are responding requires them to discuss three overall topics, McCarthyism, the Crucible, and an optional text, which, in this case, is Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And obviously, in a website, regardless of what it is about, one would have to organize the information through separate pages in their website, and those pages would have to be easy to find and navigate through. As such, they would be learning how to create multiple pages in a website, along with some principles of design, such as human-centered design. And of course, websites afford people the opportunity to communicate their points in a variety of dynamic ways. So, you see I have this background with images overlapping one another to represent how the author of The Crucible viewed McCarthyism, 
which is the question that is being posed by the prompt. Essentially, this image is indicative of the notion that the author of the crucible thought that the practice of making accusations and punishing based simply on the accusation, represented by the supposed witch in the chair, is tantamount to destroying a community, and it destroys the very fabric from which America is made, symbolized by the burning flag in the background. And down here I have this image carousel, which essentially does the same thing. It's just a series of images that represent various topics and points that are being explored and made in this website. And right next to my image carousel is an introduction to the website, which would act as my introductory paragraph in an essay in which I introduce and connect all of the topics that will be discussed and the ideas being presented in the website, the lattermost item being the claim that is made in response to the prompt. And down here I have buttons that link to the different pages denoted in the page navigation at the top of this page. So this is yet another feature of building websites that students would learn. And again, human-centered design principles are simultaneously being learned, as there need to be signifiers that denote clickable elements, and buttons are excellent features to denote that. Over here, I have one page dedicated to explaining what McCarthyism is, which is yet another skill associated with writing explanatory texts. And I have a video embedded in this page explaining what McCarthyism is, with a small blurb summarizing the video on the bottom. This is indicative of another element of web design students would be learning, as they would be learning how to embed videos into a web page. And if you click on this button here, it brings you to my analysis of the Crucible, and my analysis as to how the author felt about McCarthyism, and again, as this is a website, it affords the ability to apply skills associated with the content area in dynamic fashion. One such a skill is providing strong and thorough text evidence. You'll notice that I have a quote cited here in my paragraph analysis, but I also provide my text support in the form of this video clip taken from the Crucible, for the reader to reference for himself. And I also have the conclusion on the same page, in which I practice the content-related skills of following from and reflecting on what I discussed and articulating the significance or implications of what was discussed. Of course, there are several sections of what would be my essay displayed on this one page, so human-centered design must be considered, as we have to make clear where each section on the page begins and ends and in what order the information should be read. In this case, inserting headings and subheadings and selecting the proper page layout should be considered. These are also skills associated with web design. And I repeat essentially the same process on this page, except I included the video as part of a Google slideshow that I had created, which is another skill students would be learning associated with building a website, embedding media from a Google slideshow into the website. I did do something additional here, and manipulated the sound on the video to make the narration sound more sinister, which, coupled with my analysis on the side here, simultaneously communicates how I think the author of Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God would have viewed McCarthyism, and my personal opinion on that perspective. Essentially, I am asserting that the writer of this sermon would have been the type of person to support such a practice as McCarthyism, and I personally think that this is a sinister thing as evidenced by how the narration sounds. This is indicative of what I state in my conclusion as well. As I said before, the medium of the website affords vast and dynamic ways to communicate ideas. And aside from learning skills associated with web design that can be applied to the different careers of which I had previously made mention, they can learn other skills associated with other types of media, like video production, and skills pertaining to human-centered design, which can be utilized in a variety of other professional contexts. As such, if these are the purposes of PBL, providing students with the option of communicating ideas relevant to the content through creation of a website is an excellent way to satisfy these purposes. And if you like this video and this project idea, feel free to take a look at some of my other videos on project-based learning activities that contextualize content-related skills within the profession of video game design using the Unity Game Design Engine. 
And as always, if you find this content useful, I invite you once more to like, comment, and if you feel so inclined, do subscribe.